If you've ever played a video game before, you'd know that while the good guys are cool, the bad guys are so much more gangster. Screw saving the princess, I wanna help Ganon steal shit and commit domestic terror. Villains in video games are a driving force for creating challenges for the player and are a big part of the narrative because of themes and conflict. Villains such as Gygus, GLaDOS, and other names that start with G are some of the best characters in gaming. And despite their murderous tendencies, we love them. Although there's a lot of dog shit bad villains who could be replaced by a PlayStation 1 controller and I probably wouldn't notice. And also it feels like game devs are forgetting to put a main villain in their games. I'm looking at you, Cyberpunk. Today we're talking about the best villains in video games and what makes them so goddamn good in three easy steps. Difficulty, motive, and that homemade, you know, mama's touch. It's personal connection. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Quick, subscribe before I get you up. Pew, 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 pew. Look, I'm evil. Pew, pew, pew. It's free and it really helps me out. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Please! A villain's primary role is to provide obstacles for the player to overcome. In order to create these obstacles, the villain has to be strong and powerful. Really buff. The first instinct for game writers is to make them the strongest in the universe with holy divine powers depending on what time of year they were born. But it doesn't have to be that extreme. The main villain of Super Mario 64 is Bowser, a dinosaur. Considering Mario is an Italian plumber, fighting a dinosaur is a pretty big deal. Bowser's boss fights are also equally as challenging as Bowser is sexy. Those spins can be absolutely brutal and require the patience and timing of a Tibetan monk. And things get really crazy with the bouncing fireballs, falling floors and <laughs> Bowser's hundred made a dash. This is chaos. Five Nights at Freddy's does a similar thing, but puts a little twist on it. And by that, I mean, it's completely different. The objective of Five Nights at Freddy's isn't to hunt down the animatronics with your gold-plated bazooka with an ACOG site and Toastmaker on the side after you're completing your uh, 120 stars, because you're only one guy in an office with no weapons and no superpowers against four eight to 10 foot tall killer robots. You're not trying to win. You're just trying to survive. This simple concept of depowering the player makes the villains in contrast way scarier and way harder. The game doesn't give you a single way to defend yourself either, only ways for slowing him down. Your flashlight and cameras are about as useful as using a wet tampon in Bloodborne. Actually, that might work. There's also nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, so you are forced to deal with the issue in front of you, unless you want to become a Freddy Fazbear metal flesh and murder kid shish kebab. Basically, easy games aren't rewarding and epic villains built up over 25 hours of story are nowhere near as scary or cool if I can beat them on the first try. Five Nights at Freddy's is made even more interesting by the motives of the killer bears. They're only evil because some purple guy gave them a forced circumcision around the neck and now they're haunting minimum wage workers for fun. It makes you sympathetic towards I mean, you know, it's not their fault. They're only kids. Ah! Motives are what separates the Joker from your local meth head, and unfortunately, are often done very poorly. Because thinking up reasons for your evil skeleton overlord to be an arsehole is hard work. And it's so much easier to just say, ooh, they hate all humans. <laughs> I don't know, man. Dark Souls has a lot of villains, but it also has a lot of obstacles. The wolf Sif isn't really a villain. She's just a big-ass puppy protecting a grave. But you gotta get past, so... <laughs> Fuck it, puppy's gotta die, I guess. Sif is a loyal protective wolf, so its motive comes out of stubbornness, and also maybe because you killed its owner. <laughs> Oops. Apart from that, Dark Souls makes it clear that villain is an outdated term because, <laughs> What is going on? Ganondorf from the Legend of Zelda series is often seen as a big goblin looking emo dude who wants nothing more than power in the Triforce, but these reasons never explained. But in Wind Waker for the Wii U, it's explained that Ganondorf came from a desert town full of death and despair because it's a town in a desert. Ganon was all like, eh, we're poor, we have to eat cold pizza out of a bin. And Hyrule was all like, shut the fuck up, we're baller, bitch. Also the fact that with the Triforce and all the money in the world, Hyrule wouldn't even help Ganon's poor desert town where everyone was poor and had to eat cold pizza out of the bin and died all the time, which forced Ganon to become an evil dickhead in order to get the Triforce and save his people who were poor and dying all the time and eating cold pizza out of the bin. This makes you think differently about the once one-sided tyrant and why you're really fighting him. It also creates a personal connection between Ganon, Link, and the Kingdom of Hyrule because it was their reluctance that caused Ganon to turn into a gigantic peak thing and a weird smoke monster. I, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's the next point, personal connection. A personal connection creates more reason to hate a villain and makes you more compelled to beat their ass. Alduin from Skyrim has this deep symbolic connection to the Dragonborn with Alduin being a dragon and the Dragonborn Having a soul of a dragon. That's a lot of dragon. But the connection stops there. 
unless you look up Skyrim 34. Alduin is seen a grand total of five times throughout Skyrim and never talks to you, so he feels like every other dragon in the game. And I don't really have a reason to kill him besides everyone else telling me to. To be honest, he saved me from getting one of those forced neck circumcisions and he's never said anything bad about me, so honestly, it seems like a pretty decent dude. Well, beside the time he ate that one dude, but... I mean, he's pretty chill. In Pokemon Red and Blue, the obvious villain is Giovanni. Because Team Rock is doing a bunch of bad stuff and Giovanni's basically an evil mafia boost. But who's the real villain? Yeah, Giovanni might be bad, but is he as bad as that stupid, dumb-headed, idiotic, shit trainer, Gary? Gary is there the whole time, cutting you down, doubting you, telling you how garbage you are, and that you'll never amount to anything in life. Gary picks the starter with an advantage over yours, like a rat bastard. He builds up a really strong team and is constantly attacking you at the worst points possible. And on your first playthrough, he'll probably Mike Tyson your ass at least once. Ultimately, he becomes your final opponent and is the last thing stopping you from becoming the champion and finishing your journey. All the while, still talking sh it's an MW2 lobby. Wow, he seriously said that. You know what? I'm glad his dumb rat died. Villains should be a reflection of the main character, but I need to know that through playing in the game, not just being told it. Gary is a trainer just like you, from the same town, with the same goal in mind, and he's constantly an obstacle in your way. A good villain makes your real life problems seem so much less difficult, and can actually make you feel better. Instead of being a lonely only child whose parents worked all the time, I was a wise cracking Lombax fighting Dr. Nefarious with a best friend strapped to his back. I can see why I was addicted to this now. Video game villains provide real challenges and obstacles for you to overcome. And it's you that defeats them, not some loser on the silver screen. It's your creativity, your perseverance, and your determination that beats them. So go easy on yourself, man. You're stronger than you really think. <laughs>I don't know what happened. I miss my old- He did that forced neck circumcision thing. I didn't even know he could do that, you know? Like, that's such a- that's, It just pulled it out of left field, and now my neck's all fucking circumcised.